Congratulations, yeah. Johnny. You're going to come this way. This is oh, here we go, Ruth. Again. Well done. Give him a wave, Johnny. Um, these are the first steps you've taken as a millionaire. You are a millionaire. You are a walking millionaire. How does it feel? Just unbelievable. Unbelievable. Ruth, you're holding, yes! <laughs> you're holding the hand of a millionaire, Ruth. How does oh, that feel? Very nice. Very nice. Can I hold the hand? <laughs> Fantastic. We're all clutching money here. In here is the press conference. Johnny, you've got one hour left before you're free to do whatever you want, but now you must face the press. There you go, Johnny. Good luck. Okay, we're going to be speaking to Johnny very, very soon. He's going to be in the press conference. He's taking Ruth in there. That's all going to be happening. Um, we're going to be coming back to that in a bit. Let's just have a little, a little taste of it. Oh. <laughs> We've got the money standing by for these guys. Loads of it. Can we have the money? Okay, there you go. That is the press conference. It's a bit stilted, but then again, you know, it's not supposed to be on television. It's raw. It's Survivor raw. Look at it. It's really... But look, he's won a million quid. He's got it in his hand. Um, let's go now to um, some of the funnier moments on Isle of Popper. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it If you're happy, happy and you know you clap your hands Battling harsh conditions, food scarce and not a swing ball in sight Our survivors quickly learn to make their own entertainment Oops! <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to see your arse <laughs> Oh, that's enough game <laughs> As an impressionist, John, the man of a thousand jobs, proved himself to be the man of a thou... well, three faces. You talking to me? <laughs> you talking to me? I don't see anybody else. You talking to me? Lord Ghost Rider, a quest to fly by. Negative Ghost Rider, the pattern is full. Yeah! Oh, I love to my Oh, draw the tears from my Still, our survivors made the best of their scarce resources. Who brought this? Is this the hammock or is this the washing line? We just turned into a tram. <laughs> what? We turned into some old bag lady who just walks up the beach collecting <laughs> bits of rubbish. I've been very, very cold. You wouldn't have thought that on a tropical island. Um, and then a big, wet, slimy thing hit my face. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, inevitably, the conversations had to turn to sex. He's loving every minute of it. Have you got wood? <laughs> <Stop. No. laughs> and Barney, it is. The thing is, I don't know what the time is now, so I've got no idea where he'll be. Spearmint rhinos. <laughs> and Mark Nicholas couldn't resist a joke of his own. John, is there anything you'd give in return for more food? Sexual favours. <laughs> To who? Well, yourself, obviously. <laughs> I don't want them. <laughs> I don't knock until you've tried it. <laughs> Nick is Nick Berry famously sung that every loser wins, and with such a patently flawed philosophy as that, it's no surprise that we haven't heard a squeak out of him since. I'm afraid losing is exactly what losers do, and is something that Susanna will be coming to terms with right now. And to help Susanna do that, I'm joined by last year's loser, Jackie Carey, and psychologist Stephen Flett, a man himself who is no stranger to despair, professionally speaking, of course. Jackie, we've got you here <laughs> just to reiterate. How does it feel to come so close to winning a million quid and then only come close? Well, I, I think, uh, as Susanna said, you, you, we got back from the island much earlier than it goes out on TV, and you, you do it in your head, and you think, oh, OK, I'm in the final two, but I don't stand a chance. And as the vote came in, another unanimous verdict, and uh, it is, it's a shame, but you think on the back of that, there's going to be lots of opportunities. Even Steve Fleck got an offer to advertise shampoo, so you think, well, Pantene, I'm here, and waiting. <laughs> waiting for that call. Steve, um, you're here on hand just in case they need helping out of a tricky situation. Indeed. What advice are you going to give to Susanna today? I mean, do you think she'll need help? 
It's available if she wants it. I mean, you've got to put it in perspective. You haven't lost a million pound because you didn't have it in the first place. You've lost the chance to win a million pound. You've lost an opportunity. OK. We're, we're, we're talking, we've got to go, there's a press conference going on. We're talking about the loser. Unluckily, Jackie, you were the loser last year. There is a winner. There's a press conference going on now with the winner. The winner is Johnny. Let's see how he's doing. Um, you know, just enjoy it and make it last as long as possible and then be sensible with it. But of course, I mean, I'll have a little holiday, I'm sure. I'd love to go to Australia learn how to surf properly, so I'd love to go there just for a month or so. Um, so that'll be done sooner or later this year, I'd imagine. Okay. Caroline from Unique. Um, what do you think the guys at work are going to say tomorrow? Um, I think a lot of them will be really happy. I'm sure there'll be a few uh, jealous ones out there as well, as is in every profession, and especially if somebody gets promoted, never mind wins a million quid. Um, but no, I think the vast majority should be, hopefully be really happy. Drinks on you at the end of the week? Oh, definitely, yeah. More than a few. Have you got a message for uh, Susanna at all? Susanna, yeah, she played a brilliant game. Um, I think she looked a lot into the strategy and stuff like that before she came on the island with the other previous Survivor series and stuff. Um, she played really well, and uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hate to be in her shoes at the moment. I'm so glad I'm sitting here are instead of through there. Are you surprised you lost? Uh, you won by completely nutly. I'm actually, yeah, I'm amazed, especially when you sort of was watching the show just in the dressing room there. And, you can see that people sort of give them a good points and a bad point, so I was thinking, oh, flipping it, you know, it's... I was thinking, oh, that's it, I've definitely lost it, but um, no, I'm amazed, but absolutely delighted. Really happy. Well done, Johnny. Thank uh, you. Policeman won it last year. Yeah. You won it this year. What is it about Policeman and Survivor? I don't know. I don't know if it's um, a mixture of just maybe the people in the police, or just, you know, you're used to dealing with all members of the public from different walks of life, and you're used to trying to talk to people and try and get people around to your way of thinking. So I'm sure that's got something to do with it. Are you going to stay in the police force? Um, yeah, I'm going to see my bosses next week and uh, <laughs> have a discussion. I think it might be quite difficult just because of the media attention and stuff like that. And yeah. I think um, even winning a million quid in such a public manner, it'd be quite, you know, I think you create a barrier right away between yourself and yeah. anyone you're dealing with in the police. Um, you know, I think it would create a barrier right away, so might, things might be a bit difficult, but I'll discuss about the bosses next week. Cheers. Hi, I'm Graham Diggins from The Sun. Yeah. Um, Johnny, do you think you're going to find it rather difficult to readjust to normal life after um, this attention? Yeah, definitely. Um, the last 15 weeks has been totally surreal, as I said earlier. Um, seeing people trying to follow you around with cameras hidden underneath their t-shirts and people dressed up in the most ridiculous clothes, sunglasses and the scarves across their face and hands. OK, that is the press conference. That's going on as we speak. He mentioned earlier on about Susanna and how, you know, he didn't want to be in Susanna's shoes. Um, you were in Susanna's shoes last year. Do you take these, this, did you take it personally? Do, do, do you think this is a vote against me as a person or is this just a game? No, I didn't take it personally. I took it as a vote on my performance in the game and I think that it can't be denied. I wasn't a, a, as strong as some of the other contestants in Survivor um, last year. So I didn't take it personally, no. OK, didn't take it personally. Steve, um, if someone is in this situation, and it's a terrible situation, you are, you are so near to something that, that could potentially change your life. Could this potentially ruin your life? That, I mean, you've nearly got a million quid. I mean, are there potential damaging effects from this? Potential, but she's got a lot of family support. I, I think for Susanna, the, the, the big thing is to review what she wants to do in her life. She gave up her job, so it's not just the loss of a million quid. She's got to review her career and other things as well. And if she wants help with that, it will be available. But she needs to do it anyway, whether she gets help or not, to review where she's going. And also, if you win a million quid, research on the lottery suggests that that can be a problem too. It might be a nice problem to have, but it does ruin a lot of people's lives having the million quid. OK, um, this is a tricky one. How hard is it to congratulate the winner? How hard will it be to congratulate well, when, the winner? When you were there with Charlotte last year, how hard was it to say, congratulations, well done? It wasn't hard at all. Uh, Charlotte and I got on very well in the last few days on the island when we actually got to spend more time together. When we came off the island, we spent a week in a hotel together and we had a great time. And no, it wasn't difficult at all. I was quite pleased with Charlotte. OK, um, it's a toughie. Does a day go by when you don't think, why did I not win the million quid? What am I doing? I have to work every day. I've not got a million. I can't quit my job. Every single day goes by and that doesn't thought doesn't cross my mind. Martin and I are lucky enough to have a pri privileged life anyway and I feel lucky to have taken part in Survivor and I, I feel rich in the things that money can't buy so that isn't, that isn't just um, words, I believe that. It's a beautiful, sincere answer. Thank you very much for coming along okay, to emphasise the point that it can be good if you lose.
<laughs> Steve, thank you for coming along. Um, okay, join us after the break for more unseen footage from Panama. Old enemies are reunited and the party gets into full swing. And if you think Dave was unsteady on his feet on the island, wait till you see him get on the dance floor. Don't forget you can speak directly to our contestants by calling this number 0208 902 4, um, 4582. Um, or email us on the usual email address, that's survivorraw at itv2.co.uk. So do that now and try and catch them while they're still half sober. After the break, Susanna and Johnny face off for one last time. Well, if you win the million, I'm going to find out where you live and come and slash all your car tires <laughs> and all six of your new cars. <laughs> Survivor Raw. I'm here with the phones and we've dragged these two gorgeous survivors off the dance floor to talk to you. I don't know what they're talking about. There's some very, very strange comments going on. Bridget, can you speak? Um, what I'm are the they phone saying? Um, they're saying hi Bridget at the moment. Uh, no salty <laughs> calls yet, although I'm sure they're to come later. Anyway, I'm going to throw to Ed now, who's interviewing the wonderful winner, Johnny, and the unlucky loser, Susanna, but a good sport ne nonetheless. Ladies and gents, here they are. They seem quite happy. Um, Johnny, you're a millionaire now. Susanna, unfortunately, you're not. Um, there's, no, there's no other way of putting it. Did you see tonight's result coming? Did you think you were? Were you prepared for the defeat? Yeah, I mean, I was completely prepared for it. So I think it wasn't. It wasn't something that was came as a real shock. It would be very hard to come as a real shock when you kind of like face with about eight million viewers or whatever. It would be a nightmare. But yeah, I mean, you know, also kind of like the way the television programmes come kind of come across as well. I kind of thought that's it. <laughs> I haven't got a hope in hell. Um, but Johnny's a great guy, and you know, to be honest. Well, when I was walking down that kind of like stretch and I was kind of like voting for whether I should keep John or Johnny, I felt at that time I am voting for who should win the million really? pounds. Yeah. Um, to a certain extent. You know, and at no point, uh, yeah. was so. there at any point where you actually, when, when the votes came out, was there any point where you actually thought, maybe, maybe I've turned this round? Um, I didn't think that I turned it round. I was hoping that I might get Bridget, possibly. Um, but I knew that Bridget, you know, she'd said from right at the beginning that, you know, she perhaps wanted Johnny to win and I knew that she found it really hard because like Johnny and I were kind of like her <coughs> son and daughter and the rest of it. You so. were very mean to her when she left though, I hasten to add. <laughs> Was mother hen routine. So, that was that in was the heat of the moment. That was cut actually, and I said a couple of nice things before then. Oh, really? But obviously, ruthless Susanna has got to win over. So, <laughs> um, not that ruthless. Not that Susanna, ruthless. what happens with uh, with teaching now? Obviously, you can't quit the job. Um, how is it going to be though? Can't class discipline because everyone in the nation has seen you going to the toilet on a log. That's, that's a lot of kids in the class. That makes you cool, doesn't it, these well, days? Is, I think that kind of leads into a lot of discussions, and everybody pees. Ed, I'm sure even you pee. I'm it's sure. true, it's true, but not many women I know pee standing up on a log. That's quite an art, I'm sure. I know, and I had to it by the end of the 17 and a half hours. Unfortunately, one, the one that was shown, first of all, was not my perfect pee. <laughs> so. um, one girl's got um, called up, Siobhan Osborne. She wants to know, are you coming back to school? Siobhan, I love you. She's one of my, like, my old form. Um, I'd love to come back if I have a chance. We'll see what happens. Okay, um, Johnny, you've won the million quid. Um, can you go back to your job? You're an undercover cop. No, I was plain clothes constable. That was going to all be a blown out proportion. Oh, right, okay, okay. Um, I was going to have plain clothes for two years, but in September last year I became a detective constable. So I'll be wearing a suit every day since then. So I think the press have kind of taken it out of proportion a little bit. It wasn't undercover, it was plain clothes. Okay. And, um, it's been CID since September last year, so... So I'm showing my naivety around Sorry. the forces. What do you think it is that makes coppers win Survivor? I don't know, I think I said earlier there in the press conference, I think it's going to do with um, Honesty? Yeah. Honesty. <laughs> honesty, <laughs> honesty, integrity. I'm really used to no, I think it's more um, you're used to dealing with members of the public from all walks of life. You're speaking to people, you're trying to get people on your side of you know, you're trying to get people on your on your, your way of thinking all the time. I don't know if that's when we're gonna help ten years of that. I don't know. You never know. But you never know. Was your mind on the cash from the word go? Because a lot of people no. we've met and we've interviewed yeah. everyone by you two. And and they said, Well no, we're not really thinking about the money at the moment, we're just Lies, all of you it. You must be thinking, about, were you thinking about the of, cash? Of the course way? it's in your back of your mind all the time, but my main thing was um, this experience, that's why I applied for the experience. If there'd be no price money, I would have still gone for it, definitely. Really? Oh, definitely, yeah. All my holidays in the past have been like Ayanapa, Ibiza, Falaraki, you know, so like to go somewhere like... The rave clubs. Yeah, the and then like in Jamaica last year, that was brilliant, but you know, like to go somewhere like Central America, live in a jungle for six weeks, 
I've never done anything like it in my life. You know, obviously never done it in my life before, so just totally unique and it's a brilliant experience. So that's my main reason for applying. Okay. Susanna, were you focused on the cash? No, I think it's so it's so far from your mind. I know it sounds really weird to say that because it's about a million quid, but it's so far from your mind when you're actually building shelters and you're trying to, you know, like cope with I mean like, things like the same with Johnny. I'd never seen an assault cross in my life before. I'd never like seen rain like I had before. I'd never kind of like done so many things that I did. And you're kind of coping with that every day. Yeah. And the hunger and stuff like that it just kind of like preoccupies you. And then it's only kind of when I think we got down to the final two Definitely. that we suddenly thought Oh my God, you know, <laughs> but then at the same time, it's about the title, the ultimate survivor. It's not just yeah. about the million pounds. Exactly, so. yeah. Have you got any emails with you, Charlotte? No, unfortunately I haven't. Has anyone got any emails here? Emails? We're deprived of emails. They'll come later on. We've got oh, a lot right. of questions. Hey, Johnny, who do you reckon would have won out of you and me then? Um, don't say anything other than no, the right I don't answer. know. I think Charlotte, you're far better looking than I am. So. Oh, bless you. No, I don't know about that. <laughs> I know, it's a difficult call really, isn't it? Well, it is a tricky one to say. It's a lot of luck. It is a lot of luck. And, you know, a little bit of game playing, but uh, it all depends the tribe you're with in the first place. Helen, that was it. Exactly. And if I hadn't been for that, I mean, the service designer would not be sitting here. A lot here. of you would have been it gone. Would be Drew and Dave, I guess, personally. But are your eyes popping out of your head, though? Or are you just sort of hyperactive and excited? It's just <laughs> mad. This is kind of unbelievable. You know, I've worked for the last 10 years, so out for less than a quarter of that amount of money for 10 years. Tell me about and it, for, yeah. You know, 37 days, I've earned four times that amount. Do you feel like a millionaire? No, not at all, yeah. And, um, how, you know, because you earn like £25,000 a day, I sort of worked out, so we yeah. basically earn more than Beckham, although I don't know anymore. But that's sort of my thing. Who anything? wants to hear bragging about cash? Um, it's a pleasure, Susanna. I feel I do feel bad for you. I've not... I've, We'll, we'll ignore that whole comment I've made about you. And, and it's poorer I'm, than you, anyway. Put it this way. And it's not poorer than me. Yeah, it's poorer, it's poorer than a teacher. But Ed, I will get you in the afterlife, so don't worry about it. We'll okay, oh, thank you. you. Okay, Johnny and Susanna may both not be winners, but they're both great sports, as indeed were all our survivors. Or so we thought until we saw these clips from the Isle of Spite. After only a few days of Survivor, the claws were already out. Sarah prepared for Panama with a few extra sunbed sessions and not much else. Comes in the wet t-shirt competition. I'm not oh. being horrible, but she's an Essex girl, and Essex girls have no brains, and that's the truth. <laughs> All they know yeah, is kebabs, me. beer, yeah, going out, they haven't even got jobs, white handbags, white stilettos, that's all they know. North Island had their own weakest link, Typhon, a man whose eyebrows make Charlotte's look positively wild and untended. Typhon's great, but he's a bit of a big girl's blouse. Uh, before we go anywhere or anything, he has to groom himself and look good and make sure the suntan lotion's everywhere and the mosquito spray and he takes absolute hours grooming himself. It seems to be two steps behind everybody else. If you were to ask him to do something, he would quite willingly and gladly do it at his own pace in half an hour's time when he's got all the sand off him and all his, all his own possessions are alright and in order. But it wasn't all petty sniping. The two Johns were plainly impressed with Helen's plans for the million pound jackpot. Helen just wants to buy a house next door to her mum. I mean, how sad can you get for a 22 year old? Go and buy some drugs with it or something normal for a 22 year old. <laughs> Not buy the bloody house next door. Buy some ecstasy and steal a car for God's sake. What sort of childhood do you have? Go and commit some crime. Alistair was making a good impression. Oh my God, we're taking Alistair into our confidence here, effectively. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Alistair, like, where he is a snake in the grass and shouldn't be trusted as far as you could throw him. The sooner Alistair goes, the better. Really. And Mita and Susanna were fast establishing a friendship that looked set to last a lifetime. She's going to be really devious, really cunning, she's going to stab people in the back and she's going to do anything to get her way to that million pounds. Meanwhile, more than one old bird was getting plucked off. Those fucking girls. That's all I've heard. My feet hurt. <laughs> all our fucking feet hurt. Christ. <laughs> I think we've got enough. I just think we should use every last bit I don't know how you're going to eat that. Well, even if it's just fat and we boil it down for cooking later on. But where are you going to keep it to keep it cold? You're going to dig a hole and bury it? She's not helping herself, really. I mean, you can say that each time she said anything, the other. The remainder of my time just looking at each other. Drew really don't like it. I'm not going to risk getting food poisoning from something like that. I would rather starve. God knows what's happening in our absence. It's 
she started <laughs> hacking them all to pieces with that axe. And they all seemed such a nice bunch. Surviving the games isn't the uh, the name of this, it's surviving the people. Meow! I'm joined now by three of the stars of that video nasty, so welcome Helen, Drew and Bridget. So, what, did you have any idea that all those catty comments were sort of going on behind your backs? So yeah, really. I think we all yeah, you thought yeah. might be not not quite as mean as before. Yeah. So, were there any comments there that particularly surprised you? No. No. <laughs> no. So you expected the very oh, worst yeah, right yeah, from the very yeah, beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking girls. Yeah. <laughs> because then, um, Drew, you didn't really hit it off with Bridget um, at first. <laughs> so, how would you describe your relationship together? Um, it was a bit strained, but I mean, we were in a sort of very strained situation, obviously. And little things become big things when you're stuck together all the time. Don't they so, just? absolutely. Oh so, God, uh, yeah, it's hell there. But when you get back, it's nice to get back to the normality. Isn't it? Yeah. So would you agree with that, Bridget? So yes, definitely. Clash of personalities as well, but yeah. we're all right now. We're all right now. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> Mr. Maida, no more fighting. So, what effect did Bridget's behaviour have on you two? Because you were sort of the girls of your tribe when when you all merged. Um, I think, if I'm quite honest, um, at, when we first merged, I found I found her quite overpowering. Um, in her attitude, what, she, Bridget? Yeah, little Surely don't, not. Don't she's like her dainty you. now with her don't blonde hair, makeup. She's a, she's a fiery woman, I'll tell oh, you. Oh, really? Do yeah. tell. But um, I think she's quite overpowering, and I think that was quite surprising, like you said, coming from such a small woman. But she certainly made her point known. But she's a hard right. worker, though. Very yeah, hard, hard, hard worker. worker. Yeah. So now to you, Helen. Did your relationship change when you sort of went to the jury? And you know, people were coming off. How, how did they change then? Um, yeah, I certainly think my and Bridget's relationship changed when, when Bridget came on the jury because obviously she was coming into a situation where you know she was the first person off of South Tribe, off of the former South Tribe, um, and she was coming into North Tribe territory. And obviously, if, by, if, if the roles were kind of reversed and that was me coming into that, I would be quite apprehensive. And I certainly felt that you felt quite apprehensive, and yeah. I felt that we got along really well on the uh, on few, the jury. Few beers always help yeah. go down a tree. <laughs> and yeah, um, well, Drew, at one point you threatened the tribe with your meanness and to destroy the food, gosh, and that you wouldn't yeah. work. Were those comments genuine? Not at all. It was uh, liar. It was liar. No, it wasn't. Liar. It absolutely wasn't. It wasn't. Um, it was just a desperate attempt at the time to get them to, to, to try and persuade them to vote Ali off instead of me. No, vote that wrong. Vote me off instead of Ali. How yeah. much wine have you so, had? <laughs> right, so to all three of you now, do you think you have to be bitchy to succeed in this game? Bearing in mind I'm sat here. No, I don't. I think, I think, no. certainly not. It certainly does. does. No. So you can play the game without being bitchy. I think you're playing a better yeah. game. I mean, I think sometimes comments come out and they're caught and obviously portrayed, but uh, that's just genuine people all the time. But not all the time. You have to be really mean. So, should every girl know how to kill a chicken, Bridget? I would say the burning question. <laughs> I wouldn't say that they need to know how to kill a chicken, but I would certainly say that, that everybody should learn not to rely on light switches or any form of switch whatsoever. Not, not rely on who? Switches. Oh, right. <laughs> what on earth are you on about? Well, survival. Oh, right, yes, certainly. That's, I mean, that's what I... I think that people should learn how to do basic things, yes. just in case. Exactly, you never know when you might be stranded, never ever know. So at the risk of sounding like Scylla, will you three all meet up in the future and play happy families? Yeah, we'll go out on a hot day. <laughs> yeah. We'll go around to Bridget, Bridget's cooking Sunday dinner for us. Yeah, yeah nice definitely. roast chicken. Yeah. <laughs> and rice. So is there anything you've got to say to each other now which you didn't sort of have the chance to say on the island? I think we all had a good time. Yeah. 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 Time and you know, things that seemed a big deal on the island. Bas like, basically, you all love each other. Well, I'm going to have to stop you there. Thanks ever so much for coming on. You've got to go and enjoy the party now. There's still lots more survivor or action to come. Join us after the break when Ed reopens some old wounds. After the break, Lee confronts Susanna over that double cross. I think Lee is going to be furious if and when he finds out. Welcome back to the Survivor Raw live party. Here I am. Um, it's backstage. Everyone's drinking. Um, they've all glasses in their hands. 
Hello, sir. Who are you? I'm Michael. What are you doing here? What, drinking him? Okay, he's a, he's just drinking. There didn't seem to be any reason why he was here. I don't know how he got through security. Um, anyway, okay, for the last 12 weeks, we've brought you all the inside gossip from the islands and left no stone unturned. When there was laughter, we laughed. And when there were tears, we cried. And when there were backstabbers wielding their knives, we caught them on camera. Remember this. I was feeling really bad about Lee, really bad about Lee, about knowing that I was going to go with Johnny and with John and doing the dirty on Lee. I'm pinning my hopes on Susanna. I'm hoping she's like me. She wants to get on in the game. She's quite close to Johnny. And I don't know if I'm being double, double duped with them too. I think Lee is going to be furious if all the votes are for him. I'm hating to do this, but unfortunately, I've got to play the game I've got to play, and I'm sorry it isn't yours. This is the first chance they've had to settle their differences. Here they are, Susanna and Lee. Susanna, have you been dreading this moment? Um, yes. But I thought I thought Lee might come towards me with a broken pint glass in his hand, and I might have to go out here on a stretcher. To be honest. Okay, this is this is your, this is your time. Is there anything you'd like to say to Lee? Um. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing at him doesn't help. <laughs> Sorry, mate. I mean, I just it was I was backed into a corner. I had to make a decision, and it was horrible. And I didn't want to play that game again. You know, from then on, I was like straight all the way through because. It was just miserable, and I'd have hated to go off the way you did. So, if you want to say anything to me, just say it now. Yes, whilst Lee. We've got, whilst we've got security guards. Lee, what would you? Uh, I like the Beckham look, by the way. Nice. He covered me. Um, Lee, what do you want to say to Susanna? Um, I did have a lot I was going to say to you, but watching that tonight, the emotions and the drama, anything that I felt just dwindles into insignificance compared to what you must be going through. So it's fine. Oh. What a genuine, lovely touch that is. Um, if you could stop embracing now. Um, Lee, why did you go with... It obviously wasn't a clever move, but why did you choose the, um, Susanna rather than John and Johnny? Well, I knew that John and Johnny looked pretty inseparable. And the way I am, I, ne I never join them. I always have to beat them. So, gung-ho, let's get Susanna on board, mug the lads off and go through, and it didn't work out. OK. Um, Susanna, I've got a question for you, and Lee, you'll want to know the answer to this. When did you work out that you were going to shaft Lee? Um, hmm. I was put, obviously John and Johnny asked me if I wanted to be in the alliance with them as well, and Lee, Lee, Lee and I kind of all were thinking about being in alliance together, so it was a nightmare decision. Um, it, was, it was all on strategy, really. I mean, at the end of the day, Bridget wasn't playing the game, and we, part of our strategy was to think about fact getting on Bridget on side and her playing the game now she wasn't playing the game so I knew having been approached by John and Johnny um, that I would stand a better chance of going into the merger if I went with two guys rather than with one and it was nothing to do with class and that horrible professionals comment was taken completely out of context and I just regret that so much because it was nothing to do with that at all um, and it he's was not strategy. let that go he's had a tattoo done of it <laughs> if we could lower his trousers it's written on his <laughs> don't go there um, if Susanna had one, do you think you would have, uh, you know, deserved a bung of money from her? Yes. How much? A lot. A lot. It is actually technically against the contract, Lee. Yeah. No. You know, Susanna was... But to be honest, Susanna played the game the way I would want to have played it if I could have done. Hands up to her. She was a worthy finalist. And, um, you know, well done. OK. Are you gutted she's lost? No. I'm not... Lee, that's terrible. That wasn't fair, was it? <laughs> enough, enough. You couldn't come up with the answer quick enough. Um, let's remind ourselves of the reality of life on the island, that Lee was so upset to be voted off. I'm not so sure Susanna didn't do Lee a favour. Life on Survivor was never going to be easy, as many of our contestants soon found out. I just miss home so much. I'm never going to do anything like this again. There were tears. It was so difficult. Sorry. Outbursts. Fuck! Bad table manners. <laughs> and some truly revolting personal hygiene. 
please, not when we're about to eat. And after a diet of rice, rice, and more rice, who would have thought our survivors would be so picky? I fucking knew it. I'd rather eat an aftermath. Whilst Bridget and John were the menu. A little infestation of sandflies and midges and mozzies and no amount of spray or mozzie net seemed to make any difference and we all got tortured. There were creepy crawlies everywhere. But the biggest girly of all was Johnny. I know I'm a big girl's place and I know I'm totally stupid, but I just... But when it came to survival on the island, the biggest threat to both tribes turned out to be themselves. <laughs> Although when it came to the truly clumsy, there could only be one contender. Oh. oh my god, Dave! Oh! <laughs> oh no! Oh shit! Is that Dave? Yeah. yeah. Fuck. Let's go. Crossfire. Joining me now are two of the show's big men. Technically, that doesn't involve John, but he's a big man in the, in the playing <laughs> sense. John and Alistair were two of the most competitive players. Both fought so hard, yet both left the island with nothing but sand between their toes. Also joining me, a man who saw the island life firsthand without creasing one of his many pristine shirts. You know him as Mr. Sex and runner-up in Rear of the Year from 1987. It is, of course, Mark Nicholas. How are you, gang? <laughs> Good. Well, thanks, Ed. Yeah, Enjoying yourselves? Absolutely. Absolutely. I want you to be my PR agent. Uh, well, you, it's, it's fact, isn't it? Rear of the Year, 1997, runner-up. <laughs> Where are you? Um, life on the about island. 11. Life on the island seemed incredibly, incredibly tough. Mark, how on earth did you cope? Yes, <laughs> it was tough. We, we, we lived on an island in, in, in a five-star hotel about... Uh, um, no, we didn't. It was hard. Come um, on. It was a long haul and we suffered dismally much worse than they suffered. In fact, the owner of the rights to Survivor did say at one stage, it's you guys that are doing all the surviving. Do you, do you boys believe any of this nonsense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we could get our hands on a beer. That's one thing we could do. Okay, that's true, that's true. Um, did, you, did you ever feel bad? Because you'd swan up, John, you'd referenced it, looking slightly bouffant, <laughs> um, having slept very well, having eaten very well. Did, did you ever feel, feel guilty? Bad, Ed? Did you feel bad? What, for people who had a 1 in 12 chance of winning a million quid tax-free? Feel bad? Oh, no. He's a tough man, isn't he? He's a bit of a man. <laughs> He's a bit of a man as well. You must have done quite well out of this show. Yeah, I have. Very well. Come on. You. Um, <laughs> you the only time, I'll tell you on a serious note, I felt for them once. Okay. Because I was given some duff information about yeah. where they were going to their new island after they'd merged. Okay. And I said, you're going to find things better and you'll be able to fish. And I meant what I said. And it went badly wrong, so wrong, that where they turned up on Ila Popa as a merged tribe for the first time, we they were in they were in shocking conditions and perfectly reasonably they blamed me. Innocent, innocent, innocent. However, they had a rough time there. They were living in mud, all those insects were biting, there were snakes about. That was the one time when I thought, this is heavy duty stuff. Okay, uh, one, of our, one of our emails um, wanted to know, Mark, whether you delivered the water and the tree mail in the morning. Was that true, did you? No, I never went near that. I let them live this wonderfully peaceful existence in something like luxury. Um, never went near the islands. I you never just, even. Just I, around. Honestly, I only went on the islands that they lived when I was doing the weighing game. I came to your island. Yeah. I came to deliver some sort of tarpaulin. Yeah. And that was really it. Otherwise, oh, and the, 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 the game with the quizzes where you had to ask Susanna and Helen asked yeah, yeah. but otherwise I, I didn't go to their islands I just turned up to organize the challenge okay Mark I'm gonna stop you we've got Alistair here and John Alistair um, your tribe was arguably physically weaker than, than the other tribe how do you think how do you think this affected you do you think that was a problem I would say weak we were slightly weaker I think physically but uh, we had a good team of people who, who worked hard I mean other I looked at the other tribes so the three men who were big ish physical men and uh, but our girls made up for 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 maybe the men with the male weaknesses but uh, yeah you're right we were so weaker 
John, you're, you're a commando, ex-commando. Yep. You've done every job in the book. Were you annoyed with, uh, with the people on your tribe that weren't physically as fit as you and weren't catching on as well as you were? Not really uh, annoyed at them because of the physical fitness. I think I was more annoyed at them at basically just, you know, working around the camp and trying to keep all their stuff together. And a good example was the first night it rained, everyone was running around in their bikinis trying to find their, like, you know, waterproof clothes and stuff. And I find that a little bit annoying. But after a couple of weeks, they were all, like, much better than me. So it didn't take long to sort of catch up, really. You seem prepared for everything, but, but there was one factor that possibly you weren't prepared for, that factor being Bridget. <laughs> yeah, she was a... Uh, how did you? I mean, how did you? How did you cope with Bridget? Because she just never seemed to be focused on the ball. If that's a phrase I can use in terms of survivor. Yeah, no. Was she just was she as odd as she seems on the telly? She was, and I think a classic quote was uh, one that was shown tonight on one of the uh, sort of television links, and that was when she said, "Oh, there's been no alliances made, and there's been about twenty alliances made, you know, broken and made again." Uh, I mean, I think Bridget just played it in her own very sort of simplistic, puerile sort of a way. You know, I mean, she was very tough. Every morning you'd wake up and. Her head would be in the campfire and she'd be like cutting wood all covered in scabs and cuts and stuff, so she was hard as nails. She certainly was. Mark, you um, obviously enjoyed drinking out there, eating fine foods. How do, you th <laughs> <laughs> How do you think you would have coped if you were in these boys' situation? Do you think you could I'm have won the better meal? than John just sitting in this piece of furniture. It's swallowing him up, isn't it? <laughs> we're going to lose him. How would I have coped if I would, would you have won? I've been asked that question more than any other, I have to say. And uh, the answer is not very well. Um, I struggle without, without sleep, um, let alone everything else. Um, I think that, uh, I really think that everybody worked, really worked here. I think that um, they got involved in something that was different, not necessarily more difficult, but different from what they initially expected. The first survivor showed a lot of sunny beaches and relatively happy times in terms of the environment in which they live. Not in terms of the, the clashes of the personalities, but the environment. And I think this environment was at times pretty tough. And I think they had moments where they were quite comp comp compromised and had to fight very hard mentally to deal with it. So I, I think I'd have probably struggled. Thank you very much. Well, right, we're gonna go now to Charlotte, who's with the phones and the ex-survivors. Thanks Ed, I'm here in the phone room and the phones have not stopped ringing. I've got Mita and Sarah here and they are taking loads of calls. Come on girls, let, let us know what you've been taking. Come on then, what are people asking you? I'm an absolute sad loser. Let me just tell you. Really, come on this then. This person rung in Speaking to tell me, mind. this person rung in to tell me that they're very distraught because a year ago they went on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and they could have used their lifelines on one of the answers but they didn't and they guessed and they lost and apparently it's devastated them forever oh dear very very strange so i'm told <laughs> to seek counseling yes lots of people so what's the um, most bizarre I've had a one said that uh, she's uh, madly rachel from south wales she's madly in love with ed hall she's she must be mad if she's in love with Ed Hall. Say no more. Um, and I was asked what colour knickers I'm wearing as well, and I said oh, I'm not wearing Oh, good gracious me! No Come more her box ringing up, please. There you go. We Come don't then. wear knickers. Any, any interest in calls? I'd like to say, apparently everyone thinks I should beat up Meter. Yeah. Someone oh, really? just rang me, it rung in and said they were very upset about me being voted off, especially at Meter's Essex Girl comments. I told them Meter's lovely and she's apologised, it's all yes. forgiven. Cat they, later. They are best friends. Anyway, that's all we got time for. Thanks Thank ever so much. We're going to have to break, cut to Woo. the break. Keep your calls coming in on 0208 902 4582. They'll be answering your calls for the rest of the show. Or if you're a little bit shy, you can email us on survivorraw at itv2.co.uk. Join us again in a couple of minutes when we'll be bringing you some of the finest moments from our series on our Survivor Top 10 plus this. After the break, will it be a maker or a makeover as Dave confronts Typhon? It's effort wise, it's just zilch. It is getting to me because he's a bit of a funny. Welcome back to Survivor, where the contestants are partying like they've just won a giant reward challenge. All except for Typhon and Dave, that is, who are squirming on the sofa next to me. Um, there's a reason for this. There were words that you said, Dave, um, and I'll, I'll boil it down. You described Typhon as being a bit of a fanny. Well, I, I thought you'd probably ask this question, actually, Ed. So really, I'd like to just say that I, as a bloke, I think he's a smashing canny lad. But the reason, it's a bit of the old north-south divide. 
where up north a fanny is more of like a, a fuss pot, maybe a, a, a person for detail for his own well-being. Where down south it's entirely different. It's a lady's sexual organ. <laughs> well, I'm pleased you said that. So really, that's why it came to light. But to tie out, all I can say is that I'm amazed for, for knowing the time I knew Ty for was why he applied for Survivor because if I don't mind me saying Ty, you were, you were a bit concerned about your own body and I just thought well why are you here but apart from that I enjoyed Ty. Let's leave it there Ty from what do you have to say? Well, basically I, mean, I went on with a specific strategy to play down being non-competitive, harmless, okay. non-threatening and I did it obviously very well because that's what you saw but um, it backfired unfortunately. But the only thing I think that disturbed me was Dave's obsession with my eyelashes. I mean, he's the first bloke in my entire life that has talked about my eyelashes. And Dave, that disturbed me on the island. Did what it? was that about? Well, I kind of believe a bloke will pluck his eyelashes. eyelashes. I, okay, look, there's, there's, there's something I want to say. Dave, would you consider yourself a man's man? Yes, I would. Typhon, would you consider yourself a man's man? I'm a ladies man. <laughs> Um, what we really want to see, because this has gone on too long, will you just <laughs> hug each other and possibly kiss on cheeks? Or even buy him a drink. Hug? Will you hug? <laughs> and kiss? And kiss? And kiss? And kiss? Uh, no, no, we'll no, leave it. Can I say it again? Yeah. And maybe <laughs> kiss? Okay, well that was a beautiful moment there, I'm welling <laughs> up with it. Um, but now here comes the finest moments from Panama. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's Survivor's Top 10. At number 10, dancer Typhon gets caught smuggling contraband onto North Island. Strange, we never did find the large salami. Salt. Oh dear, dental floss. Orbit gun. Earplugs. And some string. You happy? At number 9, South Island celebrate their recent reward win with some of the worst singing since... since... I'll come back to that one. Fly me to the moon and let me sing on the low stars. Stand by your man and tell the world you love him. At number eight, Alice there, John and Johnny prove that setting new survivor records is as easy as standing on a log for over 24 hours. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is. At number seven, it's another South Island classic as Lee urges the rest of the tribe to come on in. The water's lovely. At six, Typhon gets off to a bad start as he sees his chances of survival sink without a trace, along with North Island's precious machete. Shit, it doesn't float. Drew gets nasty at five, taking a cue from Survivor One and threatening to wreak destruction if she's not voted off at Tribal Council. Drew, I'm just really, I've, I've really, over the past few days, I've really liked you. And, Me too. And because I'm I just, think that it I am just absolutely gobsmacked, to be honest, because I never thought anybody with a reasonable heart would even think about doing that. Straight in at four, old habits die hard for Newcastle Dave as the ex-firefighter turns on the sprinklers after meeting his son. And at number three, Survivor serves up its tastiest treat yet, extreme sushi. Mmm, with these fish eyes, you are really spoiling us, Mr Nicholas. And at number two, Bridget shares some fascinating insights into the excitingly spontaneous lifestyle of a farming community. I have one cup of coffee when I get up, uh, one at lunchtime with my parents, and maybe one when I get home and maybe one later. It can vary between three and four a day. My dad drinks tea all morning, we have coffee at lunchtime, tea in the afternoon, but he has cups, not mugs. The most boring woman in the universe, bar no. And at number one, it's John's crown moment. With seconds to go on the hanging around challenge and a much needed victory in his grasp, John fails to get a grip on the old adage the pride comes before a fall. 47. 
What an idiot. <laughs> well, that's just about it. Twelve men and women set off on the trail of wealth and fame. One by one, they picked each other off until tonight when there was just one survivor and one million quid left. And that survivor is, of course, Johnny. Johnny, what are your plans for tomorrow? Um, I think it's interviews all day tomorrow, unfortunately, uh, with a major hangover. <laughs> and uh, a bit of shopping, possibly. All oh, right, okay. Already. Are you going to be sensible with your cash, yes. Johnny? Apart from the first few grand. Really? And then I'll be sensible. Charlotte, any quick advice for him? Um, yeah, spend, save the rest, most of it, but spend a little bit and have a bit of fun. There you go, take that. Okay, um, ladies and gents, uh, where are we at now? We're nearly, really in. Um, where on earth are we? Um, okay, here we go. We are on item 27. Well, the time is almost upon us. Uh, the memories of Bacchus del Toro will remain with us forever, like a postcard on the mantelpiece of our minds. The sun is set on this series of Survivor, and all that remains for our contestants to do is get steadily pissed in a TV studio in North London. But there is one final ritual which we must observe. First of all, we're going to ask our winner to perform it. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. Okay, come through here. Johnny, um, you may not have known, but this flame represents your life as a penniless teacher, as a penniless policeman. Um, no, not wrong one. The jury and the audience at home have spoken. That life is now over. Can you please extinguish your old life? Oh, well, that was worth a million quits. There we go, well, ladies and gents. There are two millionaires standing next to me. I've spent on my Kremlin. <laughs> Johnny, how does it feel? You're going to go and get drunk now? Definitely. Okay, so are we. Johnny's going to get drunk. So are we. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching Survivor. I hope you've enjoyed We'll be back next year, hopefully, for more Survivor Raw. See you. Bye. Yay. strange situation obviously and little things become big things when you're stuck together all the time so just? absolutely oh so, God, uh, yeah. it's hell there but when you get back it's nice to get back to the normality it? yeah so would you agree with that Bridget I think so yes Hello. definitely Hello. clash of personalities as well but yeah. we're all right now we're all right now yeah so <laughs> it's made up no more fighting so what effect did Bridget's behavior have on you two because you were sort of the girls of your tribe when when you all merged um, I think if I'm quite honest, um, uh, when we first merged, I found I found her quite overpowering um, in her attitude. What, little Bridget? She, yeah, little Surely girls. not. Don't she's like her dainty you. now with her Don't blonde hair, makeup. She's a, she's a fiery woman, I'll tell oh, you. Oh, really? Do yeah. tell. But um, I think she's quite overpowering, and I think that was quite surprising, like you said, coming from such a small woman. But she certainly made her point known. She's a hard worker, though. Very hard worker. Hard worker. Yes. So now to you, Helen. Did your relationship change when you sort of went to the jury and you know people were coming off? How how did they change then? Um, yeah, I, th I certainly think my and Bridget's relationship changed when when Bridget came on the jury because obviously she was coming into a situation where you know she was the first person off of South Tribe, off of the former South Tribe, um, and she was coming into. North Tribe territory, and obviously, if by, if if the roles were kind of reversed, and that was me coming into that, I would be quite apprehensive. And I certainly felt that you felt quite apprehensive, and yeah. I felt that we got along really well on the uh, on the jury. Beer always yeah. to go down a tree. <laughs> and yeah. um, Drew, at one point, you threatened the tribe with your meanness and to destroy Sabotage. the food, and that you wouldn't yeah. work. Were those comments genuine? Not at all. It was uh, liar. <laughs> It wasn't, it actually wasn't, it wasn't, um, it was just a desperate attempt at the time to get them, to, to, to try and persuade them to vote Ali off instead of me, 
No, go that wrong. Put me off instead of Ali. How yeah. much wine have you so, had? <laughs> right, so to all three of you now, do you think you have to be bitchy to succeed in this game? Bearing in mind I'm sat here. No, I don't. I no, think, no. I think, certainly not. Certainly does. Does. No. So you can play the game without being bitchy. I think you're playing a better yeah. game. I mean, I think sometimes comments come out and they're caught and obviously betrayed, but uh, that's just genuine people all the time. But not all the time. You have to be really mean. So, should every girl know how to kill a chicken, Bridget? I would say the burning question. <laughs> I wouldn't say that they need to know how to kill a chicken, but I would certainly say that that everybody should learn not to rely on light switches or any form of switch whatsoever. Not, not rely on who? Switches. Oh right. <laughs> what on earth are you on about? Well, survival. Oh right. Yes, certainly. That's. I mean, that's what I. I think that people should learn how to do basic things, yes. just in case. Exactly, you never know when you might be stranded. Never ever know. So at the risk of sounding like Scylla, will you three all meet up in the future and play happy families? Yeah, we'll go out on a hot day. <laughs> yeah. We'll go around to Bridget. Bridget's cooking Sunday dinner for us. Yeah, Definitely. nice roast chicken. Yeah. <laughs> and rice. So is there anything you've got to say to each other now which you didn't sort of have the chance to say on the island? I think we all had a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Time and you know, the things that seemed a big deal on the island. Basically, you all love each other. Well, I'm going to have to stop you there. Thanks ever so much for coming on. You've got to go and enjoy the party now. There's still lots more survivor or action to come. Join us after the break when Ed reopens some old wounds. After the break, Lee confronts Susanna over that double cross. I think Lee is going to be furious if and when he finds out. Welcome back to the Survivor Raw live party. Here I am. Um, it's backstage. Everyone's drinking. Um, they've all glasses in their hands. Hello, sir. Who are you? I'm Michael. What are you doing here? What, drinking him? Okay, he's, a, he's just drinking. There didn't seem to be any reason why he was here. I don't know how he got through security. Um, anyway, okay, for the last 12 weeks, we've brought you all the inside gossip from the islands and left no stone unturned. When there was laughter, we laughed. And when there were tears, we cried. And when there were backstabbers wielding their knives, we caught them on camera. Remember this. I was feeling really bad about Lee, really bad about Lee, about knowing that I was going to go with Johnny and with John and doing the dirty on Lee. I'm putting my hopes on Susanna. I'm hoping she's like me. She wants to get on in the game. She's quite close to Johnny. And I don't know if I'm being double, double duped with them too. I think Lee is going to be furious if all the votes are for him. I'm hating to do this, but unfortunately, I've got to play the game I've got to play, and I'm sorry it isn't yours. This is the first chance they've had to settle their differences. Here they are, Susanna and Lee. Susanna, have you been dreading this moment? Um, yes. I thought I thought Lee might come towards me with a broken pint glass in his hand, and I might have to go out here on a stretcher. To be honest. Okay, this is this is your, this is your time. Is there anything you'd like to say to Lee? Um. Laughing at him doesn't help. Sorry, mate. I mean, I just. It was, I was backed into a corner, I had to make a decision and it was horrible and I didn't want to play that game again, you know, from then on I was like straight all the way through because it was just miserable and I'd have hated to go off the way you did, so if you want to say anything to me, just say it now. Yes, whilst Lee. We've got, whilst we've got security guards. Lee, what would you like, I like the Beckham look by the way, nice. He covered me. Um, Lee, what do you want to say to Susanna? Um, I did have a lot I was going to say to you, but watching that tonight, the emotions and the drama, Anything that I felt just dwindles into insignificance compared to what you must have been going through, so it's fine. Oh, what a genuine, lovely touch that is. Um, if you could stop embracing now. Um, Lee, why did you go with, it obviously wasn't a clever move, but why did you choose the, um, Susanna rather than John and Johnny? Well, I knew that John and Johnny looked pretty inseparable. And the way I am, I, I never join them, I always have to beat them, so gung-ho, let's get Susanna on board, mug the lads off and go through and it didn't work out. Okay, um, Susanna, I've got a question for you and Lee, you'll want to know the answer to this. When did you work out that you were going to shaft Lee? Um, hmm. 
I was putting, obviously John and Johnny asked me if I wanted to be in the alliance with them as well and Lee, Lee, Lee and I kind of all were thinking about being in alliance together so it was a nightmare decision. Um, it was it was all on strategy really, I mean at the end of the day Bridget wasn't playing the game and we part of our strategy was to think about the fact getting on Bridget on side and her playing the game. Now she wasn't playing the game so I knew, having been approached by John and Johnny, um, that I would stand a better chance of going into the merger if I went with two guys rather than with one. And it was nothing to do with class, and that horrible professional's comment was taken completely out of context. And I just regret that so much because it was nothing to do with that at all. Um, and it He's was not strategy. let that go, he's had a tattoo done of it. <laughs> if we could lower his trousers, it's written on his... <laughs> Don't go there. Um, if Susanna had one, do you think you would have, uh, you know, deserved a bung of money from her? Yes. How much? A lot. A lot. And he's actually technically against the contract, Lee. Yeah. No. You know, Susanna was... Quite, to be honest, Susanna played the game the way I would want to have played it if I could have done. Hands up to her. She was a worthy finalist. And, um, you know, well done. OK. Are you gutted she's lost? No. I'm not... <laughs> Lee, that's terrible. That wasn't fair, was it? <laughs> Enough, enough, you couldn't come up with the answer quick enough. Um, let's remind ourselves of the reality of life on the island that Lee was so upset to be voted off. I'm not so sure Susanna didn't do Lee a favour. Life on Survivor was never going to be easy, as many of our contestants soon found out. I just miss home so much. I'm never going to do anything like this again. There were tears. It was so difficult. Sorry. Outbursts. Fuck! Bad table manners. <laughs> and some truly revolting personal hygiene. Please, not when we're about to eat. And after a diet of rice, rice. And more rice, who would have thought our survivors would be so picky? I fucking knew it. I'd rather eat an aftermath. Whilst Bridget and John were the menu. Little infestation of sandflies and midges and mozzies and no amount of spray or mozzie net seemed to make any difference and we all got tortured. <laughs> There were creepy crawlies everywhere. But the biggest girly of all was Johnny. I know I'm a big girl's place and I know I'm totally stupid, but I just couldn't. But when it came to survival on the island, the biggest threat to both tribes turned out to be themselves. Although when it came to the truly clumsy, there could only be one contender. Oh my god, Dave! Oh! oh no! Oh shit! Is that Dave? Yeah. yeah. It's got crossfire. Joining me now are two of the show's big men. Technically, that doesn't involve John, but he's a big man in the, in the playing <laughs> sense. John and Alistair were two of the most competitive players. Both fought so hard, yet both left the island with nothing but sand between their toes. Also joining me, a man who saw the island life firsthand without creasing one of his many pristine shirts. You know him as Mr. Sex and runner-up in Rear of the Year from 1987. <laughs> it is, of course, Mark Nicholas. How are you, gang? <laughs> Thanks, Ed. Yeah, Enjoying yeah. yourselves? Absolutely. Absolutely. I want you to be my PR agent. Uh, well, you, it's, it's fact, isn't it? Rear of the Year, 1997, runner-up. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you? Um, life on the about island. about 11. <laughs> life on the island seemed incredibly, incredibly tough. Mark, how on earth did you cope? <laughs> yes, it was tough. We, we, we lived on an island in, in a, in a five-star hotel about... Uh, um, um, no, we didn't. It was hard. Come um, on. It was a long haul and we suffered dismally much worse than they suffered. In fact, the owner of the rights to Survivor did say at one stage, it's you guys that are doing all the surviving. Do you, do you boys believe any of this nonsense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we could get our hands on a beer. That's one thing we could do. 
<laughs> okay, that's true, that's true. Um, did you did you ever feel bad? Because you'd swan up, John, you'd referenced it, looking slightly bouffant, <laughs> um, uh, having slept very well, having eaten very well. Did, did you ever, ever feel, feel guilty? Bad, Ed? Did you feel bad? What, for people who had a 1 in 12 chance of winning a million quid tax-free? Feel bad? Oh, no. He's a tough man, isn't he? He's a bit of a man. He's a bit of a man as well. <laughs> you must have done quite well out of this show. Yeah, I have. Very well Come out of you. Come on, you. <laughs> um, you I'll tell you on a serious note, I felt for them once. Okay. Because I was given some duff information about yeah. where they were going to their new island after they'd merged. Okay. And I said, you're going to find things better and you'll be able to fish. And I meant what I said. And it went badly wrong, so wrong, that where they turned up on Ila Popa, as a merged tribe for the first time. You they were in they were in shocking conditions and perfectly reasonable they blame me. Innocent, innocent, innocent. However, they had a rough time there. They were living in mud, all those insects were biting, there were snakes about. That was the one time when I thought, this is heavy duty stuff. Okay, uh, one, of our, one of our emails um, wanted to know, Mark, whether you delivered the water and the tree mail in the morning. Was that true, did you? No, I never went near, the, I let them live. This wonderfully peaceful existence, existence in something like, Luxury. Um, never went near the islands. I never just, even. Just I, honestly, I only went on the islands that they lived when I was doing the weighing game. I came to your island. Yeah. I came to deliver some sort of tarpaulin. Yeah. And that was really it. Otherwise, oh, and the, 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 the game with the quizzes where you had to ask Susanna and Helen. Ask yeah. Yeah. But otherwise, I, I didn't go to their islands. I just turned up to organise the challenge. Okay, Mark, I'm going to stop you. We've got Alistair here and John. Alistair, um, your tribe was arguably physically weaker. Burn than the other tribe. How do you think? <laughs> how do you think this affected you? Do you think that was a problem? I wouldn't say weak. We were slightly weaker, I think, physically. But uh, we had a good team of people who who worked hard. I mean, other, I looked at the other tribe. So the three men who were big-ish physical men, <laughs> and uh, but our girls made up for 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 maybe the men we, the male weaknesses. But uh, yeah, you're right. We were slightly weaker. John, you're a, you're a commando, ex-commando. Yep. You've done every job in the book. Were you annoyed with uh, with the people on your tribe that weren't physically as fit as you, and weren't catching on as well as you were? Not really uh, annoyed at them because of the physical fitness. I think I was more annoyed at them at basically just you know working around the camp and trying to keep all their stuff together. And a good example was the first night it rained, everyone was running around in their bikinis trying to find their like you know waterproof clothes and stuff. And I find that a little bit annoying but after a couple of weeks they were all like much better than me so it didn't take long to sort of catch up really. You seem prepared for everything but, but there was one factor that possibly you weren't prepared for, that factor being Bridget. <laughs> yeah she was it. How did you, I mean how did you, how did you cope with Bridget because she just never seemed to be focused on the ball if that's a phrase I can use in terms of survivor. Yeah no. Was she just, was she as odd as she seems on the telly? She was and I think a classic quote was uh, one that was shown tonight on one of the uh, sort of television links and that was when she said, oh, there's been no alliances made, and there have been about 20 alliances made, you know, broken and made again. Uh, I mean, I think Bridget just played it in her own very sort of simplistic, puerile sort of a way, you know. I mean, she's very tough. Every morning you'd wake up and her head would be in the campfire and she'd be like cutting wood all covered in scabs and cuts and stuff. So she was hard as nails. She certainly was. Mark, you um, obviously enjoyed drinking out there, eating fine foods. How do you think... <laughs> How do you think you would have coped if you were in these boys' situation? Do you think you I'm could have coped been better than John just sitting in this piece of furniture? It's swallowing him up, isn't it? <laughs> we're going to lose him. How would I have coped if I'd been you a survivor? Would you have won? I've been asked that question more than any other, I have to say, and uh, the answer is not very well. Um, I struggle without without sleep, um, let alone everything else. Um, I think that uh, I really think that everybody worked, really worked here. I think that um, they got involved in something that was different, not necessarily more difficult, but different from what they initially expected. The first survivor showed a lot of sunny beaches and relatively happy times in terms of the environment in which they lived. Not in terms of the, the clashes of the personalities, but the environment. And I think this environment was at times pretty tough, and I think they had moments where they were quite comp comp compromised and had to fight very hard mentally to deal with it. So I, I think I'd have probably struggled. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, right, we're going to go now to Charlotte, who's with the phones and the ex-survivors. Thanks, Ed. I'm here in the phone room, and the phones have not stopped ringing. I've got Mita and Sarah here, and they are taking loads of calls. Come on, girls. Let, let us know what you've been taking. Come on, then. What are people asking you? I'm an absolute sad loser. Let me just tell you. Really? Come on, this then. This person rung in to tell me. Mic. This person rung in to tell me that they're very distraught because a year ago they went on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? 
and they could have used their lifelines on one of the answers but they didn't and they guessed and they lost and apparently it's devastated them forever oh dear very very strange so I told them to seek counselling <laughs> yes lots of people so what's the um, most bizarre I've had a couple. one said that uh, she's uh, madly Rachel from South Wales she's madly in love with Ed Hall she must be mad if she's in love with Ed Hall say no more um, and I was asked what colour knickers I'm wearing as well and I said oh, I'm not wearing me. no I'm more her box ring in her please there you go we Come don't on. wear knickers any, any interesting piece yes. I'd like to say apparently everyone thinks I should beat up meter yeah. someone oh, really? just ring me it, rung in and said they were very upset about me being voted off especially meter's Essex girl comment I told them meter's lovely and she's apologised it's all yes. forgiven cat they, later they are best friends anyway that's all we got time for thanks Thank ever so much we're going to have to break cat to Woo! the break Keep your calls coming in on 0208 902 4582. They'll be answering your calls for the rest of the show. Or if you're a little bit shy, you can email us on survivorraw at itv2.co.uk. Join us again in a couple of minutes when we'll be bringing you some of the finest moments from our series on our Survivor Top 10 plus this. After the break, will it be a maker or a makeover as Dave confronts Typhon? He's effort wise. It's just zilch. It is getting in me because he's a bit of a funny. Help! Help! Welcome back to Survivor, where the contestants are partying like they've just won a giant reward challenge, all except for Typhon and Dave, that is, who are squirming on the sofa next to me. Um, there's a reason for this. There were words that you said, Dave, um, and I'll, I'll boil it down. You described Typhon as being a bit of a fanny. Well, I, I, I thought you'd probably ask this question, actually, Ed. So really, I'd like to just say that I, as a bloke, I think he's a smashing canny lad. But the reason, it's a bit of the old north-south divide, where up north, a fanny is more of like a, a fuss pot, maybe a, a, a person for detail, for his own well-being, where down south it's entirely different. It's a lady's sexual organ. <laughs> well, I'm pleased you said that. So really, that's why it came to light. But uh, to tie out, all I can say is that I'm amazed for, for knowing the time I, I knew Ty for was why he applied for Survivor. Because if I don't mind me saying, Ty, you were you were a bit concerned about your own body, and I just thought, well, why are you here? But Apart from that, I enjoyed Typhon. Let's leave it there. Typhon, what do you have to say? Well, basically, I mean, I went on with a specific strategy to play down being non-competitive, harmless, okay. non-threatening. And I did it obviously very well because that's what you saw. <laughs> but um, it backfired, unfortunately. But the only thing I think that disturbed me was Dave's obsession with my eyelashes. I mean, he's the first bloke in my entire life that has talked about my eyelashes. And Dave, that disturbed me on the island. Did what was that about? Well, I kind of believe a bloke will pluck his eyelashes. Oh, okay, look, there's, there's, there's something I want to say. Dave, would you consider yourself a man's man? Yes, I would. Typhon, would you consider yourself a man's man? I'm a ladies' man. <laughs> um, what we really want to see, because this has gone on too long, will you just <laughs> hug each other and possibly kiss on cheeks? Or even buy him a drink. Hug? Will you hug? <laughs> and kiss? And kiss? And kiss? And kiss? Uh, no, and no, no. Can I say it again? That's and maybe we'll kiss? Okay, well that was a beautiful moment there, I'm welling up with it. Um, but now here comes the finest moments from Panama. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's Survivor's Top 10. In at number 10, dancer Typhon gets caught smuggling contraband onto North Island. Strange, we never did find the large salami. Salt. Oh dear, dental floss. Orbit gun. Earplugs and some string. You happy? At number nine, South Island celebrate their recent reward win with some of the worst singing since, since, I'll come back to that one. Fly me to the moon and let me sing among those stars. Stand by your man. And tell the world you love him. At number eight, Alice there, John and Johnny prove that setting new Survivor records is as easy as standing on a log for over 24 hours. Yeah! 
Yes! Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is! At number seven, it's another South Island classic as Lee urges the rest of the tribe to come on in. The water's lovely. At six, Typhon gets off to a bad start as he sees his chances of survival sink without a trace, along with North Island's precious machete. Shit, it doesn't float. Drew gets nasty at five, taking a cue from Survivor 1 and threatening to wreak destruction if she's not voted off at Tribal Council. Drew, no, I'm just really, I've, I've really, over the past few days, I've really liked you. And, Me too. And I'm just, think that we I am just absolutely gobsmacked, to be honest, because I never thought anybody with a reasonable heart would even think about doing that. Straight in at four, old habits die hard for Newcastle Dave as the ex-firefighter turns on the sprinklers after meeting his son. And at number three, Survivor serves up its tastiest treat yet, extreme sushi. Mmm, with these fish eyes, you are really spoiling us, Mr Nicholas. And at number two, Bridget shares some fascinating insights into the excitingly spontaneous lifestyle of a farming community. I have one cup of coffee when I get up, uh, one at lunchtime with my parents, and maybe one when I get home and maybe one later. It can vary between three and four a day. My dad drinks tea all morning. We have coffee at lunchtime. Tea in the afternoon. But he has cups, not mugs. The most boring woman in the universe, bar no. And at number one, it's John's crowning moment. With seconds to go on the hanging around challenge and a much needed victory in his grasp, John fails to get a grip on the old adage that pride comes before a fall. 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52. 53. Stay, John. 53. What an idiot. <laughs> well, that's just about it. Twelve men and women set off on the trail of wealth and fame. One by one, they picked each other off until tonight when there was just one survivor and one million quid left. And that survivor is, of course, Johnny. Johnny, what are your plans for tomorrow? Um, I think it's interviews all day tomorrow, unfortunately, uh, with a major hangover. <laughs> and uh, a bit of shopping, possibly. All oh, right, OK. Shopping already? Are you going to be sensible with your cash, yes. Johnny? Apart from the first few grand. Really? And then I'll be sensible. Got Charlotte, to... any quick advice for him? Um, yeah, spend, save the rest, most of it, but spend a little bit and have a bit of fun. There you go, take that. Okay, um, ladies and gents, uh, where are we at now? We're nearly, really in. Um, where on earth are we? Um, OK, here we go. We are on item 27. Well, the time is almost upon us. Uh, the memories of Bacchus del Toro will remain with us forever, like a postcard on the mantelpiece of our minds. The sun is set on this series of Survivor, and all that remains for our contestants to do is get steadily pissed in a TV studio in North London. But there is one final ritual which we must observe. First of all, we're going to ask our winner to perform it. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. Okay, come through here. Johnny, um, you may not have known, but this flame represents your life as a penniless teacher, as a penniless policeman. Um, no, not wrong one. The jury and the audience at home have spoken. That life is now over. Can you please extinguish your old life? There we go, well ladies and gents, there are two millionaires standing next to me. I've spent all mine, can I have a look? <laughs> Johnny, how does it feel? You're going to go and get drunk now? Definitely. Okay, so are we. Johnny's going to get drunk, so are we. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching Survivor, I hope you've enjoyed it. We'll be back next year, hopefully, for more Survivor Raw. See you, bye!